What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got some more NBA news to of course be talking about with you guys. In today's video I actually wanted to talk about the recent reports and rumors that actually do suggest that the Toronto Raptors are still extremely interested in trading Pascal Siakam away at some point. With it now currently being reported as well that the Golden State Warriors are still extremely interested in potentially trying to trade for him. And this is actually being reported by J uh, Jason Anderson who is actually a Sacramento Kings reporter. And he's also reporting this because he thinks that the Sacramento Kings are also interested uh, in Pascal Siakam. So he's kind of just wrote this little article to say that the Sacramento Kings, Golden State Warriors, and Los Angeles Clippers are said to be particularly still interested with Raptors forward Pascal Siakam. Now, again, the Clippers and the Kings, you know, before we get into the, the Warriors, I suppose, let's get them out of the way first. I think he'd actually fit the Clippers quite a bit. Actually would be a really nice player for them to maybe go out and get. I'm not exactly too sure. I don't know. I think they need to go after more like a dude like Bradley Beal or Zach Levine or maybe just a point guard in general. I think if they were to trade for Pascal Siakam, you'd have to trade up like Marcus Morris, um, Luke Kennard and a first round pick, which hey, that's not a bad deal at all. That gets the deal done in my opinion. Well, if you're the Sacramento Kings, I just think you got to desperately go out and get, um, you know, you got to go out and get uh, you know, a couple of these players on the Kings, some at least a star to play with, because De'Aaron Fox is there, but, you know, Fox needs so much help, like, they, he's literally got no help whatsoever, and they've got a couple role players, you know, Halliburton's there too, they really need an extra guy, and I think, you know, the, the Kings would actually have a really good trade offer for for them as well, like, they could legitimately offer Marvin Bagley, Buddy Hield, maybe, uh, and maybe a first round pick, and that probably gets the deal done, because Marvin Bagley could actually be really solid for the Toronto Raptors, where the Raptors can finally get maybe a center that can add some rim protection if Bagley can get that under his belt. Um, then, of course, Buddy Hills is a dude that will probably start for them. I'm not too sure. I don't really know how they, they're going to look at things. Maybe they play OG, you know, OG Ananobi at, small for, uh, at power forward rather than they run like a, a smallish team that has Van Vliet, Buddy Hill, Gary Trent, OG, and then Marvin Bagley. That would be an extremely exciting team to watch with like Scotty Barnes off the bench. That would be kind of insane. But again, I think, yeah, he's going to get the Kings some help. But that's why I think the Raptors are real interested in trading away Pascal. I think they really know that Scotty Barnes could be a very exciting player in the NBA at some point. I, I still believe to this day that that was a better pick than Jalen Suggs. I know a lot of people might disagree with me, but I think Scotty Barnes having the potential to guard one through five and be like a Draymond Green type player is way too hard to ignore, while Sog still has a lot of question marks for me. I think it'll take Barnes a lot of years to develop, maybe, but hey, if it takes him some time, I think the Raptors are earning for a bit of a rebuild at the moment anyway, so I don't think they care in waiting that time. But Pascal Siakam, who was out, I believe, for the first month of the season, would he be good for the Warriors? In my opinion, no, he wouldn't. I think it'd be a terrible decision to go out and get Pascal Siakam if I was the Golden State Warriors. I spoke about this before, but, you know, Steph Curry coming in, you know, I think he'll have an MVP potential season. Clay Thompson's there as well, who I hope will come back from injury and, you know, play some ball and get off those injuries. I'm really hoping. Then you got Andrew Wiggins is there, and then you got Draymond Green. Those are like a solidified full man, you know, type of thing that they've got going on over there. And then we look at James Wiseman. James Wiseman could be like, he could really improve this season. I think a lot of people give James Wiseman too much criticism for a guy that pretty much missed a whole entire year of college really came straight from high school to the NBA, which is an extremely hard thing to do. Maybe making LeBron James' rookie season even more impressive than what it already was, and Carmelo Anthony, um, you know, as well, uh, is really, really interesting to see. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to uh, do. So, yeah, the Warriors and Pascal, it's just, it's just not, I think, the best thing. You know, we're getting to why it's not the best thing. Uh, in a second, but when, when we look at it, all, it's not just that, they're going to have to trade up a lot um, to make this happen, and by the way, actually, I just forgot, Carmelo Anthony, he was, I wasn't meaning to say him, I was meaning to say Dwight Howard, he and LeBron kind of came straight from the high school to the NBA, which, hey, Wiseman could improve like that, I'm still hoping he can, but again, the Pascal Siakam trade is going to take a lot to get him, you know, we look at that trade bundle, you know, Marvin Bagley, Buddy Hill, that's a really nice young player, a really good role player, and a first round pick from a team that might not be good, for a player that 
Pascal Siakam kind of got figured out. Like, the NBA kind of figured out how to guard Pascal Siakam. And he hasn't been his best in a little bit now at this point. So that's kind of a big issue to maybe see how that, of course, is all going to go. And then we look at, you know, just the fit. The fit in general doesn't make any sense. We saw that he's incapable of playing any small ball five. He, and he, he struggles to play power forward and guard it when he's got no rim protection to center. Could you imagine this dude playing power forward and them starting maybe Draymond Green and having like Draymond Green play center? The rim protection isn't always going to be that good because Draymond Green's a little bit smaller. It just wouldn't work. And I'm saying this right now. Pascal Siakam on the Warriors just wouldn't work. He already proved that he can't guard, you know, certain players in the NBA. He can't guard those taller big centers, um, which is not, it's not his job anyway, but his job is to guard the power forward position, which... He still lacks it sometimes when, you know, he has to rely on his center to add some rim protection. The Raptors has had no rim protection last season, and that's why they were bad. But when they had, like, Sergi Barker, they were still all right because they had some rim protection here and there. I think the Raptors just need to get him a center to put up some rim protection. We saw when they had Marcus Gasol and Sergi Barker, Pascal Siakam was, like, an elite player and was able to help them win the championship, and he ended up making the All-Star a little bit later. I think on the Raptors, if they were to get him, like, a Jared Allen type player, you, you'll see him go back to his best. But that's what I'm just saying. He's not going to get that really on the Warriors because they'll probably start him now. Unless they start him at small forward and Wiseman becomes an elite rim protector and um, he doesn't have to worry about that stuff anymore, which, hey, could happen, which would have to mean they would have to trade Andrew Wiggins. Um, probably a first-round pick. Honestly, Andrew Wiggins a first-round pick and maybe yeah, just a role player here and there. That probably gets the deal done for, you know, Pascal Siakam. But that brings up the question as well. Can Pascal Siakam run the small forward position? And I don't know if he can. He, he's just a genuine power forward. I don't know if he can guard small forward. I don't know if he can guard center. But that's not to say he didn't have a good season. Like, he still averaged, like, I believe, 22 points per game or something this season, which is really, really good stats. It's just his defense is so bad that when they don't have a good rim protecting center it, it is really hard to see them winning any games and that's they didn't really bring in a rim protecting center in the off season they you know didn't have one last season they were bad last season i think they're going to be bad this season it's a little bit of a train wreck for the raptors i don't know i, I don't think it's completely a train wreck though because i think they'll definitely be able to trade see arkham away for just some players like i think sacramento would be a really good team considering marvin bagley apparently doesn't want to play for them um, and I think he'd actually be pretty good to run some center with a different team and maybe needs a fresh start and they can get rid of Buddy Hill's contract because they don't really like his contract and he might actually fit in with the Raptors and they might need a shooter here and there in that lineup. Hey, why not? A first round pick Marvin Bagley and Buddy Hill for Pascal Siakam who they don't even want because they obviously took, you know, they took Scotty Barnes and his name's been up for trade legitimately this whole entire offseason. Why wouldn't you do that? Then you bring in center that can hopefully, you know, have some good rim protection. Uh, who knows if Marvin Bagley will, though. I I'm hoping he does. I still think he could be a solid center in the league. Um, I don't know if his best position is at power forward anymore, but hey, Buddy Hewitt as well. If they can run like... That team would be super fun. It'd be like a small ball, really nice team. You know, Fred Van Vliet at point guard, Buddy Hewitt at shooting guard, Gary Trent at small forward, OG at power forward, and Marvin Bagley. The defense wouldn't be there, but then when you have, like, Scotty Barnes off the bench, if Goran Dragic decides to play and they keep him, he'll be coming off the bench. There could be a lot of things that actually do happen for this Golden State Warriors team, which could definitely be very interesting to maybe see. So again, of course, I would really like to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this down below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and comment your thoughts and opinions. Do you guys think the Golden State Warriors should trade for Pascal Siakam? Do you guys think the Toronto Raptors should, of course, trade him away? Do you guys think the Kings or the Clippers maybe should, of course, go ahead and try and trade for him? Um, you know, definitely let me know down below. Of course, if you haven't already, go check out my podcast. Uh, I've been making a lot of new podcasts. I've also made a new channel for it, which I highly recommend going and subscribing to. If you guys haven't already, I will be linking this channel in the description down below. So again, it would mean a lot to me if you guys go and subscribe. Maybe even put a comment on the channel saying you came from this channel or whatever. I de again, I would definitely really like to see that and make me very happy. But of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Through the highways and the